Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. Somebody give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please take your seat this morning. Okay, so the title of the series is More Than Marriage. Come on, say More Than Marriage. Say it louder, More Than Marriage. Please, I need um, some of our books here. Do we even have a stool or something to put it on? Okay, so, um, and hopefully um, I'll be able to sign some books after the first service for those that want to buy books and like their books to be signed. I'll be able to autograph and sign some of them. Um, like I said last week, because I'm known, what, it's, it's not standing? Leave it, it's shaking. Are we, are we dancing on it? You can't shake. Leave it now. Shake it like this. It's not your problem. It's only when you want to dance on it like this. If it's just like this, it's going to start. Praise God. Uh -huh. So as I was saying, Jerry, people just generally assume that because I do, do a lot of stuff on Mary that in our church, that's what we do every Sunday. It's only once a year that we take a month to talk about and teach on marriage. So it's something we should all benefit from. Praise the Lord. So what we are focusing on is why God even created marriage in the first place. Um, the reason why I personally feel we have not tapped into the blessing of marriage. Most humans have not tapped into it. And, I, and, and marriage is one of the most powerful things God put on the earth. That's the truth. It's one of the most powerful things. But, I, I, but the average person is marrying for the wrong reason. The average person is not tapping into the fullness of marriage. If you tap into the fullness of marriage, divorce will not be hungering you. Is somebody get what I'm saying? If you tap into the fullness of marriage, there's so much blessing. You know, it's just that people have never fully grasped what God had in mind when he made marriage. People have never fully grasped how impactful a good marriage or a bad marriage can be. If you marry wrong, the impact is so far reaching. You don't want to know. Many generations after you will suffer because you married the wrong person. And many generations after you will enjoy and thank God when you marry the right person. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's such a powerful thing. It's the first thing that God set up when he came on the earth. After he made man and all those things, the first thing he set up was marriage as an institution. That's the first thing he set up. And I tell people all the time, if, if God felt, you know, um, 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 politics would change the world, he would have made Adam a president or a prime minister. If God felt education would change the world, I've made Adam a professor. If God felt even Christianity or church would change the world, he would have made Adam a pastor. The first thing he made Adam was a husband and a father. Shows that family comes first before all those other institutions I just mentioned. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Families come first. And COVID reminded us of this because they shut down every other institution except family. When COVID came, there was no choice. We had to shut down restaurants, shut down airlines, shut down schools, shut down every other thing. But they couldn't shut down family. Because family is powerful. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's the most powerful institution. And I believe, I still believe, we've not fully tapped into it. We've not fully tapped into it. We've not fully tapped in. God's plan is to disciple the earth one family at a time. That's his plan. To disciple the earth one family at a time. What church do is just a backup plan to what family could have done. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That's what church, that's why the criteria to be a husband, I mean, the criteria to be a pastor is to be a good husband. And it's not the other way around. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You would have thought that, oh man, if you're a pastor, you'll be a good husband. No. They say, go and be a good husband first before we even make you a pastor. <laughs> Glory to God. You can come this way. Is this all my books that you can find? Come, put it, come now. What, you want to pass? You'd have just. You're Nigerian. Just come straight. We don't follow this long process. I can't see when am I ready here. Is he here? I can't see when am I ready here. Is he finished? If they can find it, find it for me. So, um, so, so that's, how, that's how important marriage is. It's so important. We've not fully tapped into it. And in the course of this month, I'm going to be looking at the seven major purposes of marriage, you know? Why, did, why are people getting married? Why, why should you even get married? In fact, let me say this way. Why do you want to get married? Because if you are married for the wrong reason, you most likely marry the wrong person. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? 
That's what I said in this book, 25 Wrong Reasons People Enter Relationships. I also can't find it. So the person that brought this thing just brought all the books I don't need. I left the ones I need. I have a book here titled 25 Wrong Reasons People Enter Relationship. It's going to be available after the service. If you marry for the, why do you want to get married? Ask the average person, why do you want to marry? You hear all kinds of funny things. And you see, sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes, amongst the seven, they even mention one, correct? But the way these purposes work, one out of seven still doesn't give it the balance. It's like having a car tire. Is a car tire important to the moving of the car? Is a car tire important? But how many tires or wheels does a car need? If you have one, does it help your life in any way? You see how it works. So even when you have one out of the purposes right, and you, ha- you don't have the six right, your movement is still not the right way. If you have two tires, okay, that's great. That's a great improvement, but you are still not moving well. Even if you have three, that's great, but you are still not going to move well. So you, the best thing is to have all to fully understand the purpose of God and for marriage, then you can enjoy. Then, it's even, and those of you that are single, it's even better for you. That way, you are even marrying right from the first instance. You are looking at the right qualities. You can't just pick one. If you pick one, it will still be lopsided. It will still be balanced. So why do you even want to get married? You must marry for the right reason. You must marry for what? The right reason. Please, every single here, there's a book out there. It will be available, 25 Wrong Reasons People Enter Relationships. It will be available for signing. If, want, I can, if I have time after service, I'll sign. I, I looked at 25 Wrong Reasons. People enter marriages for all kinds of reasons, except the reasons God intended. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Do you know that there's nowhere in the Bible they say you should marry for love? The average person asks, why do you want to marry? You hear things like, because I've found the love of my life. Have you heard that before? And you know, that sounds, that sounds very cute. It sounds very touching. So, oh, Mr. Maya Wajo, why do you want to marry Miss Tolu, whatever your maiden name was? <laughs> I can't remember. And you hear things like, you know, I just, uh, you know, I've been single for many years and uh, I saw her in the church and she has been serving the Lord and I just fell in love with her. So I want to marry her because I love her. And you hear quack, 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 quack. Nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> because this is, this is the reasons why marriages are not working because we're building on the wrong foundation. It sounds cute, but you see, most of these things came from movies. That, you see, and this is why culture is important. People don't get it. When you see us fighting culture sometimes, you don't understand. Culture is so important because... It, it takes one or two generations for culture to change. When it changes, the third generation will not even know that there was such a time that there was another thing. Somebody gets what I'm saying? So when you see, and that's why people, when people say, we have too many churches, too many churches, you are joking. You don't understand. That churches are still, it's still the only, it's, the Bible says it's the pillar and the ground of truth. If you remove church, there's no other person insisting on the truth of God's word. Though. No other person is called to do that. And when I was doing my research on, on um, my book, titled Pink and Blue, talking about differences between men and women, one of the, one of, um, the professors, one of the main guys, that was, he said he, when he went to companies and everywhere, that all HR and all big companies, they all agree men and women are different. But they all said, you can't say that. He said, because if you say it, people will fight you. So they knew. That the way a woman thinks and the way a man thinks is different, but they can't say it. They all preach equality. They all preach everybody is the same. So it's causing madness in the world. Even though they knew the truth. So there's only one institution that can stand and say the truth, no matter how people feel. In many parts of the world today, you can't even tell somebody you can't be gay, you can't be homosexual. No, you say you are, you are homophobic. How can you tell somebody's wrong to be gay? It's only the ground and pillar of the Bible doesn't change. If you ask my opinion any day, anytime, I'll say my opinion is the Bible opinion. I have no other opinion. Because every other person will shift ground. Politicians will shift ground. Because a politician is not interested in your soul. It's interested in his, in his candidacy. So he can say anything he needs to say. Only the Bible does not change. So you need to understand why we fight culture. <laughs> you know, they've started transgender madness in all those places. They say children should not even be told that they are male or female. They should choose. 
And it's so bad that in some places, I hear that your child can actually go to school and change his sex before he comes back. And he doesn't have to tell you the parent. As in your child, I say, boy. Joseph. He goes to school. Returns as what? Joseph. <laughs> uh, it's your bikini, but it doesn't matter. That, that's what's going on. Because nobody wants to say the truth. They will go and do surgery. That's what I mean. I don't just mean they change his name. I don't mean they change his name. I mean that they will, he will go and do a surgery. They will cut out his genitals. That's what I'm telling you. That's in your child. Though, without, and they don't have to tell you. That's what they are saying. So you need to understand why we're fighting culture sometimes. Everybody can say they are transgender. So they found out in UFC that the transgender male that are now saying they are female are cracking the skulls of the real females. They are killing them. I said, of course, when I want mad, I want Chris. When I go Chris, every time you leave God's way, you go see the effect. Some people understand what I'm saying. In some of those countries, me now as a man, I can come and I just say, I don't feel like a man again. That I'm a woman. I'll drop it myself. <laughs> so now that I've said I'm a woman, they must all treat me like a woman. Which means I can participate in female sports instead of men. So imagine me now, fighting woman. If I give you backhand. You know Igbaru, Igbaru. If I give you Igbaru. So the average man will beat up the average woman. So the those transgender people that are claiming to be women but are men are killing and breaking the skulls of the real women. Because there's no way a man and a woman's energy is the same. So when you see us fighting culture, we know what we're doing because in, 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 by two or three generations, all this homosexuality gay we're talking about, by, by three or four generations, because they started putting it in movies, started putting it in cartoons, by three or four generations, your children won't even know that there's a time that only men and women used to marry. They won't even know that they exist. All they'll be used to. A lot of children now, I know, I know all of you want to relocate, but a, a lot of people that have relocated, they found out that when their children come back from school, they meet other kids that they have father and father. They meet other kids that have only mother and mother. So your kids no longer see man and woman as the normal. Though. You need to realize your kids' normal now is that Chidi can marry Chike. <laughs> I must relocate. That's what Lot did, though. Went to Sodom and Gomorrah. They finished him. He didn't return with one thing. I'm not saying you should not go to Canada or anywhere you want to go. <laughs> if you, but please be led. And please consider your children. Canada is not heaven. UK is not heaven. Please, I beg you in the name of God. Consider, factor that in. Are you here, somebody? Factor your spiritual well-being. Don't just pick a school because it's the cheapest school in the UK. Factor your spiritual well-being too. Pray about that. God would rather invest in your kids spiritually than education. Education is great, but it has never been what determines anybody's outcome in life. Are you here, somebody? Education is good, but family is stronger. Are you here, somebody? So you will never see anywhere where the Bible says to marry for love. It's not there. That was never, I remember what brought me to that case. So it was movies and music that gave us the impression that people marry for love. It's music and movies. And, and you know, music and movies and music is one of the strongest influencers of culture. That's why for us as a church, we're always particular. We're trying to do shoot movies. Um, just us girls, just, only, you've, not, you've never shown that thing. I thought we were supposed to show it today. Or so I can't remember. Was that what our teeth were? There was something I was supposed to do today. I can't remember. But, but we can't show it now because of time. Because see, see, how many minutes is it that video? We'll show it next Sunday or something. When today's also Thanksgiving service. So, but I will show that to you. So we're always particular about trying to shoot movies and those kind of things. And thank God for people that are into music and all that because that's how culture is shaped. So all this love we are talking about, it was never so before. It's music and movies that painted the picture of people falling in love. What does that even mean? If you understand what love means, you know you can't fall into it. You can't fall into it. Do people fall into work? So I'll just pass it. I just fell into Zenith Bank. I just fell into manager. <laughs> they don't fall into work. <laughs> they don't fall into work. But these are the things young people are talking about. I fell in love. So where? 
It's music and movies. And these guys are interested in selling their movies, not, not to teach you any values. Are you here, somebody? So that's the difference between what we do as Christians. Where we do our movies not just to make money, it's to pass values. Eternally, that will be more valuable than just making money. This money, you will eat it and you see that. How many beds will you sleep? How many meals will you eat? When people chase money, I, don't, I laugh. What, what do you want to do? What will you do? You'll buy clothes, eh? you'll buy cars. Eh? If you buy 10 cars, you can use only one at once. You buy 10 houses, you can sleep in only one at once. The things we are suffering ourselves for has no meaning. All temporary. So there's no way God, there's no way the Bible says you should marry for love. All the Bible will tell you, did the Bible never say marry who you love? They say love who you marry. Listen to that. There's no way the Bible says you marry who you love. What you will hear is to love who you marry. There's a big difference. Big difference. Marrying who you love is, a, is in past tense. It's a state. Loving who you marry is a proposition. It's a promise. So we really shouldn't be saying, I love you. We should be saying, I want to love you. <laughs> because the first one is a state of the past. This is why many people enter it and feel they don't need to do anything again. The second one is something you will continuously do for the rest of your life. Loving someone is not a state. It's a proposition of action that you will do when you are in the mood and when you are not in the mood. When the person is behaving lovable and when the person is not behaving lovable. It's a proposition. It's a promise. It's a promise. Are you here, somebody? So that is why God never designed it that you marry who you love as if it's past tense. No, it's a proposition you will keep doing forever. Nowhere in the Bible does it say marry who you love. You won't see that. It's, it's not, it's, 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 marrying for love is not a biblical concept. And why am I talking about Bible? It's God that created marriage. That's why, okay? In case you're wondering why we're building it on the Bible and not on social studies. It's God that created marriage. Uh-huh, because people don't understand. And again, <laughs> the good thing about it is that I'm also like a professional in this field. So in most places, yeah, thank you. I just mean this guy, they don't like me. This guy, like me. I waved to people, didn't wave to me back. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, thank you. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a professional in this field. And in, in, because I sometimes speak to people that don't like scripture, I'm skeptical about scripture, I generally also give science and give statistics in most of my teaching. So ask anybody, they will tell you love is never enough. When marriages are working, if you ask them why it's working or why it's not working, you never hear it's because I love him. No. All that, all that romance and all that nonsense, it happens when people have not married. When people have married, it's real stuff. He can pay rent. We can pay school fees. He's listening to me. Real stuff now comes in. Nobody builds on love. It's just a scam. That they're using to sell Valentine card and sell flowers and sell diamond rings. That's all it's about. Because those guys must keep selling. <laughs> they must keep selling. But that, that never makes a marriage work. Physical attraction doesn't make a marriage work. Getting along is always more important than getting aroused. <laughs> Are you getting this? So how beautiful she is or how handsome he is, it's a waste of time. Counts for nothing when the real deal starts. Counts for nothing. Counts for nothing. Counts for nothing when the real deal starts. Are you here, somebody? Animals are better at picking spouses than humans. And the reason is because God gave us free will. That's why we get confused. Animals are programmed. They know. They have sense. A lioness will never mate with the first available lion. That's not how it works. She tries to mate with the most powerful lion. Because the most powerful lion guarantees provision, guarantees protection, and also guarantees posterity or procreation. You see how animals think? But you see human beings? <laughs> he doesn't have job, but I love him. He doesn't have sense, but I love him. He doesn't have Christ, but I love him. That's what you hear. 
the most famous question I receive from all over the world, and I kid you not, my most consistent, frequent DM or message is, Pastor, I have this man, has no sense, has no job, has no respect for me, has no care for me, nothing, <laughs> but I love him. I'm telling you, this is the most, co- I receive it every day, and I'm not lying to you. I receive it every single day of the, of the, of the year. Not, not only from women, even from men. Pastor, this guy, she doesn't want again. She doesn't call me. She has three boyfriends. She has just other thing. <laughs> but I love him. I love her. I hear all kinds of things. I'm telling you. I will hear a guy who tell me, eh, my girlfriend is going out with her ex. They are going on dates. They are hanging out. She's going to see him. And I've told her I don't like it. But she said, ah, won't I go out again? What's that? This, this, this. What should I do? I love her. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I receive this every day. A girl will tell me, Pastor, there's a, my boyfriend. Uh, he, he beat me. Then he brought on that girl to the house. He and the girl not sleep in the room. They now made me sleep in the parlor. What should I do? You know why those people are confused? Because they think this game is about love. So I love him. It's obvious. There is no other area human beings act stupid. Except in love. No other area. Imagine you go to a bank. You give them your money to deposit. They didn't collect your name. They didn't give you any number. They didn't give you receipts. They didn't give you a lot. They just collected your money and left. And you came the next day. You didn't even know who you collected the money from. Then they say, go and bring more money. I don't think there's any human being here that would be so stupid and say, I love the bank, I love it. <laughs> Everybody will say, ah, I can't bank here. You people don't appear serious, so I'm going to bring my money. Now, you will see reality. It's only in love. People, you are investing. You are making deposits. No record, no return, nothing. And you are sitting, <laughs> you are sitting in front of the bank. I love him. <laughs> you want to take your child to a school. You are checking everything before you put your child in that school. Everybody, people are smart in every other area. But because they've heard music, so much music, so much movies, look, the things you watch and hear are affecting you. Not that they will, they are already affecting you. So that's why you, you, you feel if you're not stupid, you're not in love. Most young people think, if I'm not feeling butterflies, hey, this is why people are staying single long in this time. And it will get worse because the more they hear these kind of funny things, the more they are looking for that special one. If I don't feel the butterfly, I'm not, he's nice, he's godly, he's hardworking, he loves me, he takes care of me. Oh, pastor, I'm not feeling it. Feel kill you there. Feel it kill you there. <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Because they have been taught rubbish. So they are expecting butterflies. They are expecting a spark. A butterfly has a very short lifespan. Very short lifespan. A spark is a short, bright light. Short, bright light. So those things are not the things you want. Lions don't fall in love based on butterflies. Eagles don't fall in love based on butterflies. If you hear how eagles choose their mates, and eagles are one of those animals that have one mate forever. If you see how those animals choose their mates, it's based on responsibility. The, I heard, I've not studied this myself, but I've heard that the eagle will take a, a, a piece of um, um, br- um, wood and take it very high and drop it and see if the male will be able to catch it. Then it will increase the size and drop it and see if the male will be able to catch it. He said because the female wants to know that if I, cause where they lay their eggs very high. That if one of our chicks are falling, would this guy be able to catch this thing? Animals are way smarter than us in picking a spouse. Because in the jungle, survival is more important than feelings, than flowers. Survival. I'm telling you. So that's what people are doing. See, they're marrying for love. When rent is due. You'll be so shocked how love we live. When school fees is due, you'll be so shocked. 
when, when you need that man or that woman the most and they are not there, you'll be so shocked how far love will take you. And this is why, like I said, singles are staying long too single. Looking for rubbish. Looking for love. Looking for the special one. There are many special ones around you. It's just that they program the spec into you that is stopping you from seeing other options. Especially for the women. Especially for the women. Why, why is it especially for the women? Because as a woman, you are created with adaptability. Adaptability is one of the things God gave you. And it's not, he didn't just dash you. He gave you because it's relevant to your role in life. Because you're going to be a helper. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I'll get into these things when we go into the purposes itself. So that you will understand it. You see what God was looking at when I was getting married. It wasn't all this fashion we are doing. And all these feelings we are doing. It was a functional relationship when he gave Adam a wife. He said, this man is not good for you to be alone. I will make for you a helper. So the man has to have what he's assigned to do. The woman was ready to help. Simple and short. If we focus on just these two things, everybody can get married this week. But we focus on shape, focus on hair, focus on complexion, focus on feelings. Then it becomes more difficult to find that person that fits all these things. Imagine, who, is, who are the housing agents here? Housing agents, can I see your hand? Real estate guys, real estate people. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Only five real estate in this church. We need more real estate people. So imagine I'm looking for a house, and I tell you that, uh, Mark, the house I want, eh, I want it to be two-story building, but has one bungalow by the side. Then it has two swimming pools, one in front, one at the back. Then three pump three <laughs> in front of the swimming pool. Then flowers. Flowers will go from the back through the parlor and come out. Agents here, which year am I going to find this house? This one people are waiting for. And they are praying hard. Oh God, do it. My three pump three. It must not be reduced. My two swimming pool. If I want to find a house faster, all I need is a house that has space to do two swimming pool. When can I find a house? I can find it today. Then I'll build the swimming pool. Then I'll plant the palm trees. You see, I can get that one today. If I have land, all I need is somewhere that has what? Capacity to plant the things I want. But what most people think is that God is going to bring this exact dream I have finished. And you will wait. You will wait. You won't believe it. You know God never intended that we stay single this long. Never intended. Mary, mother of Jesus, got pregnant around 13, 14. That's when she was already engaged to be married. God never intended we stay single. Your sexual urge alone, you, you realize God, it wasn't programmed that you'll be single at this age. It wasn't. This is why you fast and pray, fast and pray, the urge goes they look like this. So I know they go anywhere. Because you can't pray away nature. It's like praying away hunger. <laughs> like praying, oh God, oh God, I will not be hungry. That's just for two hours, for two hours. We will revisit this prayer point in a few hours. So, hunger, uh, sexual urge is, is such a natural urge. And I'm not saying you're going to be fornicating. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to show you something that in God's mind, he never intended that we'll be staying single at 30 something. If you're a Christian and you're single at 30 something, you're either, you're either already heavily involved in sex or you're heavily involved in masturbation. Only a few people are able to still keep their sanity. At that age, managing the sexual urge till that time. That's the, that's the honest truth. That's the honest truth. You're either a champion in masturbation. Or you're already settling yourself. Because God in his mind never intended. But we are, we are all staying single looking for that special one. They're looking for a big house. They're looking for a big wedding. We're just putting too many obstacles. In front of young people. You don't need any big job. Fine. You say, hey, my pastor, the girls of these days, if you don't have money, they won't marry you. It's the type you're looking for. You're looking for the type you can't afford. There are many, many, many girls that are doing their own thing. They have their own job. They're not looking for a man to feed them. But you, you want to go and chase that slave queen? 
that wants to buy LV bag she can't afford, that wants to buy hair she can't afford, you carry your two legs there. What you are looking for, you will see it. Are you here, somebody? That thing you are looking for, you will see it. <laughs> it's the, the guest of these days. It's the type you are chasing. There are many, 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 many girls I know. Have a good job. Have a good head on their shoulders. All they need is a reasonable man. You don't even have to be rich. Just be reasonable. Have a way where you are going with your life. They are ready to partner with you. Unfortunately, many women too have been disappointed because when they're looking for that kind of man, they're going to look for a bomb boy that has no vision. They just talk all talk. I plan to. I plan to. Don't marry, I plan to. When I married my wife, I didn't have a salary. And I didn't have money. That's the truth. Zero in my bank account, zero salary. Church couldn't pay me then, but I was already a young pastor. You see, I was telling one young boy over the weekend, that's why it's good for men to start early. Find your purpose early. School is good, but school is not purpose. And thank God for the way the world, when we did it, it was, it was miraculous. But in your own world now, you can literally be an IT specialist before as we strike all of strife. So don't use that strike as an excuse. You can literally be a, a specialist and expert before you even start university. And that's what we should train our kids to do. Let them find their path early. Forget this five, five years of waiting for Hassu, then go and do NYSC. This is why we are, we, are, we are all roasting in Africa. By that time, your mates in Silicon Valley and all that is already a billionaire. You are still trying to pass jam. Because you must go to the roots laid for you by your ancients. Somebody said tradition is peer pressure from your ancestors. <laughs> Trying to follow a path that everybody must do. You must study law. So you want to wait until jam allow you. Then you enter school. Then ask to allow you. Then you finish. Then NYSA allow you. By the time you are even finished, you are even useless already in your mind. You are so confused. You don't even know what to do. Because when you are younger, you can take risk. You can invest. I started pastoring at around 19, 20. As I say, pastor. So by the time I met my wife, around 25, 26, or 27, I don't know how old I was, 27-ish, 28-ish. Yes. So by the time I had done ministry from 19 to 20, 20-something, I was already, no, I didn't have money. But I already had a church. Church was a, a sizable congregation. We were even doing three services then. So I didn't have cash oh, because church couldn't pay me then. But I already was working in my purpose. So, and, I, and I, I wasn't looking for a woman that would use money to be chasing. No, she knew where I was. But you see, when you have something you are doing that is showing, you might not have so much money, but she has seen that, okay, you, you, you want to sell phones, for instance, and she has seen that you have built a clientele. Maybe it's even online you sell it. But she says that, okay, you have um, 20 people make inquiries every day, and you close two sales every week. She can say, okay, there's something already going on. She can say, if I join with you, I have a crowd of influence that can buy this phone too. By the time we join, two are better. That one. Is somebody seeing what I'm saying? So you need to give us something to also believe. Not that you're a loafer. You plan to, you plan to. What's your dream? To go to Canada. That's the only dream you have. When you get there, what will you do? <laughs> I'll go to Toronto. That's the only dream. No dream. No, no, no path. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So give us something to believe. Because one of a woman's major need is security. So give her, you don't have to be rich. I didn't have nothing when I married her. I had nothing. But I, I had purpose. I had passion. And it was already showing that this thing was going to work. And the lady, she came and joined me. You can see how far the thing has gone already. Simple. So there's nowhere they say we should marry for love. And there's nowhere in the Bible where you will hear that the secret of a marriage is love. You won't hear it. You will never see in the Bible where it says, uh, what makes a marriage strong is two people that love each other. You will never see it in the Bible. Again, it's culture that's teaching you that. What you will see in the Bible are clear-cut instructions. And they're never the same for men and women. So you will hear things like, husbands love your wife, but they were specific. They mentioned agape kind of love. You see, English... Limits us. The love there mentioned, number one, it wasn't both ways. They didn't say husband and wife, love yourself. Mm -mm. They say, you man, the major need of your wife is love. But you see, it's not feelings, it's not flowers. They mentioned it clearly. Agape kind of love, which is sacrificial, unconditional 
love. Which, and it's a set of actions. He said, like Christ, the way he died for the church and gave himself for it. So they were specific. They're saying, give up yourself. So you want to sleep? Your wife wants to talk? Give up yourself. You want to watch match? Your wife wants to watch Z World? Give up your remote. Are you here, somebody? By the way, Asna is doing well this year. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of Asna. <laughs> in, our, in our DCC football group, that, uh, there's one for ministers that we are in. I'm, I'm, very, I'm rooting for Asna seriously in the group now. Seriously. I'm saying, is anybody doubting Asna this season? I mean, they are just performing, man. Very proud. All right. I mean, their they are second is so sure this season. Wait, till now one carry first. <laughs> what will Man City come if you come first? My brother, I'm going to rest. Second one given, I better be happy. <laughs> so, you know, so clear cut things. Then you see for the, for the man, they never say, Women love your husband. No. They were saying things like, Submit to your husband, respect your husband, because that's what he needs. Somebody get what I'm saying? The only place in scripture where they use the word love for a woman loving a man is in Titus. It's to let the older women teach the younger women how to love their husbands. Again, English will limit you if you read in English. In the original Greek, that word love mentioned for women loving men is not the same as the one mentioned for men loving women. The one mentioned for women loving men in Titus is filio, which means friendship kind of love. So one of the things a man needs is a woman that can be his friend, his brother, like his party. Somebody he can talk to without the conversation getting emotional. Because women can make emotional conversation out of a very... <laughs> I, was, I was counseling a couple, and they, two of them said they were having a discussion. And the man was, they were talking about that celebrity that married a second wife. And um, the woman was saying, can you imagine, this man just went to bring on her wife to scatter a perfectly peaceful and loving family. And the man now said, no, the family is not scattered. Maybe he can even rent on that house for them. I told him, no. Once you say that, women personalize every conversation. Men don't know. If a woman is talking about something random, it's not random. It's never random. It's never random. It's about us. So he was talking innocently. I said, no, the moment you say that, she will say, oh, so that's your own plan, eh? You are planning to go and rent on that. Uh, I told him you can't do that. <laughs> no women conversation is random. They can be talking about the five galaxies. It's about your five children. You don't know. Once you say we don't need Saturn, let's destroy. Ah, no, this is how you will destroy one of our... You don't do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, a man sometimes needs the person he can have a conversation with without her turning it to an emotional conversation. She can just flow with him and just like a party. Are you here, somebody? Men need companionship, recreational companionship. My friend, watch football with him. Support his club. Buy Jesse. Know who he's playing. Once in a while. And you know, good thing about you as a woman, you can do more than one thing at the same time. So, you don't have to stop what you're doing to watch the match. Just sit in front with him, watch small, and be doing something that you, you can multitask. My wife does that all the time, even though it's very annoying. She's very annoying. We'll be watching a movie together. We've already planned that we'll watch this movie together. We'll watch it together, and she'll be playing game. Sometimes she'll be answering chat on the other phone and playing game on one, and we're watching something. I said, so are you watching or are you playing game? He said, I'm watching now. She just said this and that. that. She's hearing. Sometimes if I won't hear something, she's not going to tell me, oh, that's what he said. I said, how are you hearing and still playing game? Because women can multitask. Men cannot. Women hear better, smell uh, better. <laughs> Those of you that have attended pink and blue, I've explained these things. Men are just an old model. Analog, type 310. Women are iPhone 14. Women hear better, smell better, perceive better. I mean, the, the faculties God gave them is just too much. Just too much. And it's not a bad thing, it's a positive thing because they gave them to us as helpers. So if the more sophisticated your helper is, the better for you. It's not a disadvantage. 
if you tap into the blessing in her, they put all those faculties in her for your good. That's why it doesn't make sense to have a wife you don't talk to, you don't partner with. You're wasting the whole marriage. And that's what I want to talk about in this, in this one month. The real reasons why God made marriage. Not just love. There's no such thing. Are you here, somebody? Who make her here? If you're in a conversation on the phone. Trust me, a lot of times, a woman is hearing the other person. They are weird. And so when you stand up and go and pick the call outside, ah, they follow you. We are going together. She's hearing what the person is saying, and she only hears what the person is saying. She's hearing what you are saying. Not only what you are saying, she's also hearing what you are not saying. And she's reading the person's mind. And I told you when we did pink and blue, women can see from their side. So when you're reading your chat, she's reading it with you. She's looking like this, so she's reading it. Uh, hello there. Oh, we are going to see reading it. She's looking straight up, but she's reading your chat. Because she can see from her side. Real scientific fact or not. <laughs> scientific fact, women see from their side. This is why women can gossip without turning their head. <laughs> Try gossiping with a man. Say, hey, see that boy, see that boy. Hey, we are. He will turn his whole head. <laughs> she will say, no, look, no, look. <laughs> she, the man will turn his whole head. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? But women will be looking straight. They've gossiped everybody. They've scoped the room. They've seen whatever. They're picking incredible amount of details. Picking incredible amount of details. You know, women, most times when you do makeup, we don't even know you use more than one color. Because men, we're just seeing one color, brown. But in the average woman's face, if you know how many foundation, lintel, roofing, different things, different colors have gone in. Are you here, somebody? So, um, love is a proposition. We don't marry for love. Like I said, in this, in this whole... Um, month, we're going to look at the real reasons why people get married. And that means I'll be teaching one point in each service. There are seven major reasons God created marriage. I'll be picking one point in each service, so um, try and get the whole thing. Um, we don't marry for love. I have this book titled, How to Know If He or She Really Loves You. So what I did in this book is I look at seven ways to know. Because love is not a feeling. It's a proposition of action. So you can check the actions to know if somebody really loves you. Forget what they're saying. Anybody can say anything. Talk is cheap. What you need to look for is a set of actions. And it's two books in one. If you're a guy, what you need is how to know if she loves you. <laughs> guys enter a lot of one chance without knowing. Just like guys don't complain as much, but they enter one chance. How to know if she loves you. I listed seven things here. If you're a woman, it's two books in one, so the same book. If you're a woman, how to know if he really loves you. Seven things also to do if this is guy loves you. Forget what he's saying. Forget that he has even gone to try and marry you or he has gone to meet your parents. That's not a way to know if he loves you because he can be marrying you for the wrong reason. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Some people eating food and enjoying it, it's not because the food is sweeter. It's because they are hungry. Are you getting what I'm saying? So somebody can be trying to marry you. think, hey, but he wants to marry me. It doesn't mean anything. He wants to enslave you. I've heard men make, say all kinds of things. Break off from all your friends. Stop work. Stop this. Just sit here. But the man is happy. He wants to marry me. He wants to enslave you. If he cuts you off like that and makes you not to earn any money, it means you have no choice but to be a slave to him. You can never have your say. Because if you want to buy a, 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 a biscuit, you have to ask him. Slavery. So, so, so mar somebody marrying you doesn't mean love. Please, every wise woman, if you don't have this book and you've not read it, please, you're already endangering your life and that of generations to come. Get this book. So I have all of them here. I'll do some short book signing outside after the first service. Hallelujah. A whole lot of other books here. A to Z of marriage. I broke down in alphabetical order, how, what love means to a man, what it means to a woman. A lot of good material. So please, feast on them. Hallelujah. And we're going to, like I said, next week, we're going to go into detail, really, of how God designed marriage, what the real purposes are, what he wants to achieve in your life. Marriage is not a destination. It's only a vehicle to get it there. And we'll look at next week the fact that not everybody will marry. That's the truth. God will call you into some people into a life of holiness, a life of serving him. But I pray for those that desire to marry that in this season, nothing will delay your marriage in the name of Jesus. For those of you already married, I pray for you also that your own home will be a godly home. Your own home will be a home that represents God's kingdom. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we bow our heads everywhere for one minute? If there's anybody under the sound of my voice that is not born again, you are under the sound of my voice and you are not born again, I would like to pray with you. Marriage is a spiritual thing. It's created by God. So there's no way you can be a good partner if you don't have God. You can't build a godly marriage without being a godly person. If you're under the sound of my voice and you know you are not born again, I want to give your life to Jesus. All heads are bowed. Please just help me raise up your right hand wherever you are. You are in this service. You know you are not born again. You know if you die today, you're not sure if you will make heaven. Please, I want to pray with you this morning. Raise up your right hand. Quickly, quickly, wherever you are. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Anybody, anybody. Up, down, wherever, wherever you are. Raise the right hand. Whether you're upstairs or downstairs, raise the right hand. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. God bless you. God bless you. Raise the hand. Raise it above your head. I want to know who I'm praying with this morning. Whether you're upstairs or downstairs, just help me raise up your right hand. Thank you, Jesus. If your hand is raised, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Let's pray. Stand. Let's pray together. Stand. 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 I saw you raise your hand. Please stand. Stand right there where you are. Put your hand on your chest. We're going to pray together. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Put your hand on your chest. Say after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for listening to the end. I pray that whatever that you have listened to today, you are not going just to keep it, but you are going to do what God has told you through this message. And please kindly, if you are new here or you are not, I mean you have not subscribed, kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this my channel. And also you can share this video with someone else. Thank you so much and see you in my next video. Bye.